Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another episode of the Catholic League Forum. I'm Mike McDonald, Director of Communications at the Catholic League, and joining me today, as always, is Bill Donahue, President and CEO of the Catholic League. Uh, now, Bill, we're back in school across the country, and uh, you've said this uh, a lot, that uh, one of the big hotbeds for anti-Catholicism is uh, the college campuses. So this week, we uh, sort of dove down and uh, looked at a couple of uh, samples of promising, disturbing somewhere in between stories of uh, what's going on in the campuses. And uh, one of the things we were looking at was a Jewish school here in New York, uh, Yeshiva, and some of the, the legal troubles that they're having. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? Yes, Yeshiva is the largest Jewish uh, university in the country. It's also Orthodox, unlike some other Jewish schools. And they stick to their principles of the Torah. Uh, there is a, a dissident group, we have our own, on the campus there, and they want an LGBT group on the campus. Well, they're not going to put up with the Yeshiva. Uh, if, you, if you want that, you can go someplace else. Those students know that. Uh, so they took them to court. Well, to get right to the point here, we thought that we made some progress when Sonia Sotomayor of the uh, United States Supreme Court put a stay on the right of the students to have their, quote, club on the campus. But then she went on the other side, along with other uh, justices in a five to four ruling and said, listen, it hasn't been flushed through on the courts. Now, they, they are right procedurally. The Supreme Court usually doesn't want to take a case unless it's gone through the appeals court or whatever the highest court might be in the particular state. On the other hand, this is so egregious a violation of the First right. Amendment that Samuel Alito on the court said no. And, and, and joining with him was Gorsuch, uh, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, and uh, Clarence Thomas saying, we ought to take it right now. In any event, I do think the, the, you, the, the Jews will win on this and Catholics should be supporting them uh, because what's at stake is uh, a religious exemption, which is which is granted. They're not forced to, under, under Title IX. We don't have to do this, but uh, it'll be fleshed out in the courts and uh, and we'll see how, how it works out. Right. And uh, on our website, Bill, you have a very good piece this week. And our uh, dear viewer, if you want to check it out, it's catholicleague.org. We'll have a link in the description below. Uh, but you sort of use it as a bit of a foil. Uh, yeshiva and the, the Orthodox Jews are being very strong, uh, sticking up for their faith as they should, as we all should. Uh, but then you uh, compare that with uh, what's going on in some of the Catholic yeah. campuses. Yeah. And can you tell us what's yeah, going on Yeah, there are about 230 co ca Catholic colleges and universities in the country. And according to the New Ways Ministry, which I normally wouldn't quote, because they're a, a dissident, uh, basically anti-Catholic group, uh, a fallen away group, uh, they, uh, they, by their estimate, they're probably right about this, probably more than 130 Catholic colleges and universities have kind of given in in one way or another. We list an example of just 10. And by the way, there's many more. Uh, and I didn't even choose necessarily the most egregious because we don't have the time to go through and monitor every Catholic college university. On the other hand, I want to tell the, uh, the viewers that I'm not saying that if, if you're not one of the top 15 as Cardinal Newman Society, which is a good organization, said of these are the class Catholic schools, that therefore they're just simply gone astray. Uh, some have a little bit, others more so than others. But the important thing is this. Where are the yeshiva universities in the Catholic community right. when it comes to Catholic college? We don't have enough of them. We need to stick to our principles. The, 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 the collapse of Catholic colleges and universities in terms of their fidelity to the church's teachings on sexuality in particular is startling. Yeah. I don't think most Catholic parents know what's going on on these campuses. They, there's absolutely no difference between a Catholic campus and the state school down the block in most states in this country when it comes to this LGBT uh, agenda. It's one thing to say everybody is welcome, everyone will be treated equally, there will be no bullying of anybody in our campus regardless of how you identify yourself. It's quite another to say we are going to basically support the LGBT uh, agenda, don't forget the Q and the I and you know, the plus and everything else there. Remember, Pope Francis has called gender ideology demonic. Right. Now, what would happen if they had a conversation on the campus, and I'm sure they already have, what would they say about the Pope? Would they say he's demonic for not recognizing that a man can become a woman, a woman can become a man, a man can get pregnant? This kind of madness is in our society. The fact that it's being entertained at many Catholic colleges and universities is a disgrace. Yeah, no, it is It is very disturbing. And, uh, dear viewer, if you are interested in this, uh, Bill does have uh, the story up on our uh, website, catholicleague.org. Uh, and in next month's Catalyst, we're also going, in October's Catalyst, we're going to have uh, the Cardinal Newman Society of their, their top recommended 15. 
Uh, so to get Catalyst, become a member of the Catholic League. You can do that on our website as well, uh, catholicleague.org. Uh, as a member, you get the Catalyst, and uh, you stay in tune to all the big stuff we've got going on here. Uh, now, Bill, one of the other things are, of course, state schools. They're, they're out there, probably uh, more of them than uh, Catholic schools and other religious schools. Uh, and they're, they're particularly bad. Uh, one school this week, or last week technically, Indiana University, uh, dedicated a statue to Alfred Kinsey, and I don't think most people know about that. So, uh, can you tell our dear viewers? Yeah, and, and, and first of all, in, Indiana University is not exactly a hotbed of radicalism. It, it's not, you know, it's not Madison, Wisconsin, Burlington, uh, Vermont, or uh, Berkeley, California. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they did put up a sculpture of uh, of Alfred Kinsey. People may not know who the man is. He was a pervert and a child molester, and he's being honored at Indiana University. And I would dare say that it, had he done his work on sex research, which was published after World War II, at any almost any other school in the country, they would honor him as well. Uh, you know, the kids are busy taking their uh, sledgehammers, smashing uh, statues of the iconic saint, Hudapero Serra, and of course of the founders. But meanwhile, they're having they're celebrating child uh, pornography, uh, perverts. Uh, molesters on the college campuses, such as Kinsey, the sculpture there. Now, Kinsey did his study of, uh, of sexuality on men and women. In order to do his research, he molested children. By that, I'm being very specific. Infants, two months of age. We have all the proof, all right? This is not even contested. Dr. Judith Reisman was one of the great scholars in this. She passed away last year. James H. Jones, he's no conservative. He wrote the biography of Kinsey. Read about it. The movie, 2004, Kinsey, reviewed by the New York Times, hardly a Catholic source. They have told the truth about it as well. He had people manipulate and, and masturbate and, and penetrate children to get his data, all right? Uh, as Judith Reisman said, this is a crime. They even locked up, it's still secret, on the campus of Indiana University where they had the Kinsey Institute. Uh, some, some, some material that we don't know what's in there about more of his perversions. What he did to himself physically, I will not describe to you. All right? Uh, the, the guy was absolutely incredible. What he did to himself and to others. And having sex with uh, men and boys, women and girls, animals and, and relatives. Animals and relatives. This is the guy, the pervert, whom they're celebrating, a big sculpture on the campus of Indiana University. Nobody in the country is talking about this except for the Catholic League. Yes. And, where, is, where are all the other Catholic organizations out there? You know, the so-called lay Catholic organizations? Do they ever get out of their pajamas and drinking their coffee in the morning? We actually get some work done here at the Catholic League, and I'm going to continue to hammer that home because I'm tired of the phony lay Catholic organizations as I am the perverts and the people who celebrate people like Kinsey at Indiana University. Yeah, no, absolutely. We can't call them the Rebels of Ole Miss anymore, but they can put up a statue to uh, that's this, right. this pervert that's just beyond the pale. Uh, and, dear viewer, if you are interested in that, uh, do check out our website. We'll have a link in the description below, but uh, you can also find that at catholicleague.org. Uh, now, Bill, we do have some exciting news to close out this week on. Uh, we have put out a uh, commission to survey uh, by John McLaughlin, a very uh, highly recommend pollster, looking at uh, Catholic attitude in uh, the 50 years since Vatican II. Uh, you've got 60 years. Or that's 60 right. years. We'll give him an extra. See, so a young guy. Old guys like me would know that. He wouldn't know that. He's not even born there. No, no. Well, well, that's okay. My time. We well, need some young blood here. Absolutely. Uh, and so uh, you've got a great piece uh, you're working on right now. Yeah, uh, still, yeah, still in the works. Trying uh, to analyze is a huge survey. But yeah, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of great work. So uh, thank you yeah. to uh, John McLaughlin and company for doing that. And uh, Bill's guy and Jim McLaughlin and the Jim brother. McLaughlin, yep. Excuse me. Uh, the great work they've been doing. Uh, and so you're working uh, away on that right now, uh, getting back to that, and hopefully we'll have something out uh, sometime next week. Well, okay. I'll release the analysis of the data, and we will also uh, make the raw data available. Uh, unlike some other people, <clears throat> like the late Father Andrew Greeley, Irish Catholic sociologist, I asked him to see the raw data of one of his surveys a number of years ago, and he said he would not give it to me. No, we're honest here at the Catholic League, and we're proud of our work here at the Catholic League. And so we don't do what the left does, which is thought control and to censor. We actually believe in freedom of speech. Uh, novelty. Uh, so, dear viewer, be sure to uh, tune in next week as we go over all that data, and we've got some other surprises coming up, but this is the first big one for the fall. So, thank you for watching. Uh, if you could give it a like and subscribe, as always, that greatly helps. Thanks, Bill. Thank you so much.